Okay, welcome to part three of The Cup. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Turn your King James Bible to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. Probably the wildest book in all the Bible. Uh, chapter 23. I'm going to almost certainly mispronounce these names, so please forgive me and bear with me. Verse 1, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola the elder, and Aholabah her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names Samaria, Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholiabah. Aholiabah. Now you gotta understand something. Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah, and Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Churches won't touch this subject, but nevertheless, you could read about it in the book of Kings, 1 and 2 Kings, and 1 and 2 Chronicles. Uh, have you ever heard of Ahab? A king Ahab and Jezebel? Well, they were. he was the king of Israel from Samaria and and then Judah had its own king they were not the same people all right so and verse 5 and Ahola played the harlot when she was mine and she dotted on her lovers on the Assyrians her neighbors which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, and all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she dotted, with all their idols, she defiled herself. Isn't it funny? Assyria came in and took northern Israel, Assyria, and took them and made slaves out of them, took them into captivity. They didn't leave them in the land. They took them away. And then they took people from another place and stuck them in Samaria. I mean, not all of them, but, you know, they took a lot of them. That's like invading New York, and taking the people from New York and taking them to Georgia and then taking the people from Georgia and bringing them to New York. Um, that's pretty much what the Assyrians did. Verse 8. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her and they bruised the breasts of her virginity and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians upon whom she do doted. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword, and she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt she was more corrupt. Now, they're talking about Judah here. Now, if you read Jeremiah 3, 8, you will see that God divorced northern Israel. God divorced Israel, but he never divorced Judah. And when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. In other words, Jerusalem was even a bigger whore than Israel that got divorced. 
She doted upon the Syrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way, and that she increased her whoredoms. And when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with girdles upon their loins, exceedingly in dyed attire, upon their head, all of them princes to look at after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers into them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness, that my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms, and calling to remembrance the days of her youth, whereas she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt, for she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth, in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Therefore, O Aholibah, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, Pekod and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses. And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels and with an assembly of people which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about it, round about, and I will set judgment before them and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. And I will set my jealousy against thee and they shall deal furious, furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. And thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them nor remember Egypt any more. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully and take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I will do these things unto thee, because, ooh, because thou hast gone a-whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. You know, this could very well be America. America's gone a whoring after the heathen. I mean, let's face it. You've got all kind. You've got Buddhist temples. You've got Islam mosque. You've got Kabbalah centers from Judaism, which is little more than witchcraft masquerading as Judaism. You got you even got Luciferian and Church of Satan's running uh, churches running around. I mean, really, America, yeah. And because thou art polluted with their idols, and people don't consider it, but television is probably the biggest idol in America. I mean, let's face it, people. I know many, most, most, most people spend hours and hours and hours in front of the television watching garbage, and they know almost nothing about the Bible. I mean, let's face it. 
I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into thine hand. There's that cup again. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Now, this is talking about Judah doing what a, uh, um, Israel did. Israel did the bad stuff first. So Judah, uh, you know, so it says in verse 31, Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup, deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It contained much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy sister, Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the shards thereof and pluck off thine own breasts, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me and cast me behind thy back, Therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. The Lord said moreover unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Aholaba? Yea, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. What does that mean to pass through the fire? Well, there was a satanic god named Moloch. And they used to burn the children alive as a sacrifice unto Moloch. I don't think the abortion clinics are much different. I really don't. Verse 38. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. Can you imagine this? They sacrificed their children to Satan. And then they went to church afterwards. You think you can play both sides of the fence? I don't think so. In verse 40, And furthermore, that they have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came, for whom thou didst, didst wash thyself, paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments painting the eyes you know they're putting makeup all over you know on their eyes and stuff you know that's what whores do right and saddest upon a stately bed and a table prepared before it whereupon thou hast sent mine incense and mine oil and a voice of a multitude being at ease was with her and with the men of the common sort were brought Sabaeans from the wilderness um, Sabaeans I believe they those are Arabs uh, and with the men of the common sort were brought Sabaeans from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Then said I unto her that was old in the adulteries, Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that played the harlot. So went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholaba, the lewd women." And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood, because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. Shedding blood. They're talking about murder, okay? For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up, bring up a company upon them and will give them to be 
removed and spoiled, and the company shall stone them with stones and dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you, and ye shall bend, bear, and ye shall bear the sins of your idols, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Boy, that's some tough stuff, huh? All right, more Old Testament. Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets. Not minor in message, but minor in size. H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K, -K -K, chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. Now, if I'm reading this right, and I get, and I'm understanding this correctly, this is a vision for the end time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. Behold. His soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. How's that? But the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth up unto, unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Shall they not rise up suddenly, that shall bite thee? And awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Uh, we're, when we're talking about booties, we're not talking about something that goes on your feet. We're talking about, uh, you know, pirates used to want booty, you know, pirates' booty, you know, gold, silver, jewels. Verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations... All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves? For very vanity? For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, that maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory, drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup the cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. 
and the shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. The cup on the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. You know, Chicago had 762 murders last year. The violence of the land and of the city, right? Verse 18. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake! To the dumb stone, Arise! It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. All right, turn to the book of Zechariah chapter 12. Personally, I think the majority of this prophecy is given a peek into the future in the book of Re in the book of Revelation, John. But we're going to read Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1, and then I'm going to go to uh, the book of Revelation and show you where I believe. It's fulfilled. Okay, verse 1. Zechariah 12, 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Hmm, a cup of trembling. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and Jerusalem and against Jerusalem uh, let's see let me stop right here I was thinking this was uh, Jerusalem but it's not it's Samaria the capital of Israel but it's an interesting story. I'm going to read it real quick. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. Uh, Elisha has a helper, and he's worried because the Assyrians are really powerful, and they're all over the place, and they're worried, right? So what does Elisha say? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be again, uh, with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hmm. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray with, pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So the angels struck the army of, of the enemy of Israel with blindness. It's kind of hard to fight when you can't see, you know? Now, I was thinking this was Jerusalem, but it's not. So, uh, let's see. All right, let's go back to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burden of, well, let's see. Now, let's go to 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone 
for all people, all that burden themselves with it, it shall cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the tents, of Judah first. Ah. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day, what day? I believe that's the uh, millennial day. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Now there's going to be some modern preachers that will tell you that this is going to apply to the United Nations creation of 1948 that's over in the Middle East now. I don't think so. But I'm going to read you in the book of Revelation where I think this applies. Verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Didn't they pierce Christ in his side? Oh, yeah. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Isn't Christ called the only begotten son? Oh, yeah. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Now, if you want to read the part where they pierced him, John 19 and verse 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And then in John 19, 37, And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Revelation 1 and 7, uh, 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. All right, uh, verse 11. In the day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadadurimen in the valley of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimshai apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Okay. All right, go to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. I think this is the fulfillment of Zechariah that we just read. All right, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Do you know that there are people that'll tell you that God and Satan is the same person? Yeah. I was reading an article by a so-called identity 
preacher. Now there is a, um, the word Satan means adversary. Devil means accuser. You know, adversary is somebody that's against you. So, and, and then there's a, a, a verse in the Bible where it says that God was angry with Israel and was her adversary. And they use that and basically that you know you could you could translate it either adversary or Satan. So they'll say, see, see, this proves that God is Satan. Uh, but then you read hold, you know, you read this, you know, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, bound him a thousand years. Can you imagine calling saying that this this is God really you know how can they read Isaiah 14 where Lucifer fell from heaven and, and say that that's God uh, you know th th that's why identity preaching is a I, I would call it a joke but it's not a joke it's it's th that's why honestly I, th I think I think Devil's people get in here to preach this stuff to destroy any credible semblance of, you know, just to drive drive people away. It, it's 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 insane. Uh, just when I think I've heard all the heresies. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, I did a study on it. But I think that all the children that were aborted, all the children that died in childbirth, and all the children that died at a young age, I believe that they are going to be resurrected and given a chance to grow up during this thousand year millennium. Millennium just means it's Latin for thousand. This thousand year reign when Satan is locked up and it's going to be our job to teach these children. I'm going to probably have a couple of them. Long story. Because there's going to be people that after Satan's bound for the thousand years, he's going to be released. He's going to go out and deceive the people. And then there's going to be another war, which we're going to read about. But... Um, you know, there are, I mean, there's, what, what's this war going to be? Is this war going to be people that are saved in heaven with Christ after Satan's released from the thousand years? No, it's got to be, you know, all the children that died in childbirth, uh, that's what it means. That's what I believe. I, I think all these people are going to get a chance to grow up and then some of them are going to be deceived by Satan, and they're going to come against Jerusalem. So let's, let's keep reading. And I saw thrones, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Ah. So the those in Christ are going to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, the unsaved, uh, they're not going to get raised from the dead until after the thousand years are done. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. 
On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I'm looking forward to that. hope I make it. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay, so this is after Christ returns. Okay? Satan's going to get released out of prison. Uh, Satan, you've been um, sentenced to prison for a thousand years. Verse 8. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. What's the beloved city? Jerusalem is. And fire, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So, you know, think about it. If we're ruling and reigning with Christ, uh, these are the saved people, who's coming up against the fight against God? It's got to be unsaved people. Well, where do they come from? Where do these unsaved people come from? Uh, when the Sadducees asked Christ about the woman that had the seven husbands, and they said, well, in the resurrection, whose husband is she going to be? Because the seven people had her. And Jesus said, basically, um, you know... You, you know, you do greatly err not knowing the scriptures. For when they are resurrected um, from the dead, uh, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. So if we don't have marriage and we're not having children, where are these, where, what are these people coming from that are fighting against Jerusalem? Did people lose their salvation, turn against the Lord? People that were saved? And, and no, I think, honestly, the Bible doesn't explicitly say it, but I believe that the children that died in childbirth and abortions and, and whatever, um, stillborns, I think that they're going to be resurrected, given mortal bodies. And I think when Satan's released from his prison, he's going to uh, lead them astray and they're going to come up against Jerusalem and fire from and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I think that's, I think that's how it's going to play out. But that's my opinion. And the devil, verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. People that say that there's annihilation, that there is no eternal torment, that might be true. But the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. How long is forever and ever? Forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne. Ooh. This is a place you do not want to be. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the, judge were ju and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their works. According to their works. Hmm. So there's a book of life, and it says, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, plural, according to their works. So there's evidently a book of life, and there must be, maybe there's a book of death, or the book of the dead, I don't know. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. There's going to be a whole bunch of, uh, all the 
all the sailors that died in the Navy through uh, all the years, World War I, World War II, just the Pacific alone, the war between the United States and Japan, there's, there's going to be a whole lot of people that the sea is going to give up their dead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh boy, that don't sound good, does it? No, sure doesn't. So, all right, we did Zechariah and, uh, okay, so this is the end of the Old Testament part of the cup of the Lord. We're going to be doing the New Testament starting in Matthew in the next study, which I probably won't get to for a day or two. I've got things I have to do, and um, we'll see what happens. So, All right, well, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.